On this Steve Huntington show and Sirius XM Radio Margaritaville On Demand, our guest is going to be Kaz Haley. I've wanted to have him on all year long with his album, All the Right People, out. And we're going to start it off with Hello, Texas. Yeah, Kaz is in Texas, Kaz Haley. And uh, this song's from Jimmy Buffett from the Urban Cowboy soundtrack album back in 1980, a very successful movie and soundtrack. The album compiled by Irving Azoff, Howard Kaufman, and Becky Shargo. So it's Jimmy Buffett himself who is in the number one slot kicking off the album. Oh, we're going to hear another one, too, on this show from uh, Bonnie Raitt doing a Rusty Weir song. But here is Hello, Texas, right before we say hello to Kaz Haley on the Steve Huntington Show. As we say hello to the last two months of 2021 and hello, Texas, from Jimmy Buffett from the Urban Cowboy soundtrack album on the Steve Huntington Show Series XM On Demand. We're going to say hello to Kaz Haley coming to us from Paris, Texas. We got some great stories and some great songs. Kaz, welcome to the show. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you having me here. You live in, the, well, out in a, in the farmland and... Um, your music is appreciated all across the, the country. We've enjoyed it over the last decade or so for uh, uh, on Radio Margaritaville. And um, got a, a new album, All the Right People. And I call it new because uh, what a year we, we've been in and it's still producing great songs. I want to, uh, I want to start with the title song. Um, you have surrounded yourself with... Uh, with all the right people, you've got the family involved <laughs> in uh, in every aspect of your life, as of course you would uh, in the, the living. And we'll we'll get into uh, all that that entails in your Texas home, but also in the music, in the recording. And um, and Cassie, uh, your wife, sings great. And now you, your son Eben is playing bass. And um, yep, yep. And also uh, Nola is uh, playing fiddle. Nola's playing fiddle, yeah. You know. Uh... All the right people. It sounds like it's an exclusive club, but it's actually not. All the right people. The spirit of the song is about 
everybody in your life about you honoring the relationships that you have, even for the people that are at a distance. And that's why it says all the right people are here and all the right people are there. It's sort of like serenity. You know, it's about just sort of taking a check of all your relationships and how you're relating with those relationships and what, what that all means of just accepting, accepting things where they're at. And so easy to relate to no matter who you are and how many friends you have really close friends. And we know what that, that means or, or other people that you see, um, in, in larger crowds or, and yeah. And, and even, even people that, that you used to have close relationships with, but you've grown apart and that's a natural thing. You know, it's okay to not be okay with Sarasota with somebody, you know? And there's nothing like having any kind of event, you know, even just no event at all and have all the right people around. You. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kaz Halley, the uh, title song of the current album, All the Right People on Steve Huntington's show. Tap dancing, I'm on my way. I was built to face the day. Shaped in size to get the job done. I'm gonna put my toes up and just have a little fun. Singing all the right people are here. All the right people are there. All the right people got all the right people, all the right people. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bridge builder connecting the dots. Your footsteps show can mean a lie. Sweet exchange when your eyes meet mine And we put our phones down and just share a little time Singing all the right people are here All the right people are there Tiptoeing through your day Halfway scared you done went the wrong way You weren't raised to be this undone You better put your heels down and just have a little fun Singing all the right people are here All the right people are there All the right people got all Stand. 
stand by me If the sky that we look upon Should tumble and fall Or the mountain should crumble to the sea Just as long as you stand, stand by me And darling, darling, stand by me Oh, stand by me Oh, stand now Stand by me, stand by me Well, there's a classic, Stand By Me, and it's one that uh, I've seen, and you should too, by the way, on kashaley.com, C-A-S-H-A-L-E-Y.com, um, because Cassie sings the lead on uh, on a fundraising uh home show there and that's um and that's a that's a good moment on your on your website man what a good song you it, know it truly is that i grew up i grew up listening to my dad play that song it was one of the my dad's name was bear haley it was one of the bear haley standards so i've been playing that song as long as i can i could play i yeah. love it that's and it's my favorite, mo- my favorite movie too. Classic original by Benny King, and it was a hit again all over again in the in the eighties when the movie came out. That's a great movie too. Yeah, so uh, love it. You think you'll? Well, I was gonna say cut it and put it on an album. Um, Man, you know I probably should. At some point, I'll probably do a covers album. You know sure. what I mean? Some of yep. my favorite songs, and that's definitely one of them. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we also heard all the right people uh, from the latest Kaz Haley album. And it is a, uh, it's a family, uh, a family business. Now it's a family project to uh, put together the music and the life, the, the farm that you live in. Did you start out um, as a kid uh, being, uh, you know, out past civilization and, and you know, knowing how to do I, all that stuff? I grew, I grew up in the country um, on the North west side of lamar county texas and then you know grew up moved away moved to dallas and then um in 2007 we got the opportunity to buy some property on the northeast side of the county and uh you know it started off i I didn't grow up farming i grew up uh my dad had a concrete company so i grew up doing construction and we sort of lived a homesteading kind of life growing up where we had built our own cabin and we had cisterns and we had an outdoor shower and an outdoor bathroom. And so we didn't have running water for years. Um, So I I had roughed it before and I grew up learning how to frame and pour concrete to build. Um, So I had some confidence when we bought this land that we were going to, we were going to build everything ourselves, And so we moved out here and lived in a camper for a year and we started construction on the house. And so we built the house up and then that gave way to us wanting to do more with the property. We were homeschooling our kids. And so it just started making sense. So we got some chickens, we got some goats, we got some pigs. And then we were like, well, we've got all these animals. We need to grow some food for the animals and for us. And that led to us, you know, trying to first, we just started with typical kind of garden and then we got into more permaculture and regenerative agriculture 
and we got into more of a no-till kind of method for our main garden. And we've been working on that for about six or seven years. And then that led way to all kinds of other projects where we got into um, food forests and berms and swells. And uh, it's just been, it's been a fun, big experiment where we're just trying out everything we can and trying to do it in a way that's actually good for the earth. You know, it's all organic what we do out here. We don't use any kind of chemicals on anything. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's just been absolutely really incredible and fun. And of course, it's riddled with all kinds of failures from left to right. Um, you know, and that one of the, one of the big things that I took away from all the counseling that I've gotten from other farmers and regenerative agriculture friends that I have that are in the scene is just try it out, you know, just, just, just uh, start doing it and watch it and you'll learn. And, you know, um, that's sort of what we're doing. It's just a big experiment trying to, trying to reconnect, you know. Are you able, able to produce more than enough of some items than you need and then uh, get to know other people and swap it for what they're producing more than enough of? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. We do. Uh, you know, we provide a lot of the here locally, there's a, a Paris yoga juice company, a coffee company. And we, uh, we provide all the mint for their juices. We just started doing that. Wow. Uh, we grow a ton of okra. <laughs> okra cool. goes off the chain here. So that a lot of the extra okra ends up going to the pigs and we definitely share uh, with a lot of our family as well. We're not to the point of, of growing everything we need just yet, but we have goals of being able to do more of a market style and to be able to go to the farmer's market and sell and stuff like that. Right. We're just, we're wanting to do it in a, you know, every time I think about the market garden, a lot of things go out of balance for me. The fun, if, if I'm just doing it as a business, the fun sort of leaves the table. So I'm trying to keep it all in balance to where I really still enjoy it and that I'm doing the right kind of things as far as the styles that I'm, you know, I really am attracted to the whole no-till kind of method and doing a two acre no-till market style garden. It's a long-term project and you got to have, you know, it's, it's doing no-till is something you just got to stack layers and you end up choking the weeds out and you end up keeping all the microorganisms intact. You end up retaining more water. You know, it's all about ground cover and it takes time, you know, wow. so. Amazing. I can't even imagine it. I mean, I'm not the most urban guy and there are people who don't even, you know, uh, get to see greenery and you are working the earth and homeschooling and, uh, and giving your kids uh, an appreciation that in this day and age, wow, I, that's so valuable, I think. You know, I, I just hope that, you know, I know there's a lot of things we could be doing better. And I worry all the time about homeschooling the kids and maybe they're, you know, not getting this or that, you know. But the one thing that they are getting is they're understanding their food systems and they're going to understand how to take care of themselves, which I think is one of the most important things is for somebody to truly be able to take care of themselves. Yeah. Very fortunate to, uh, to get, be brought up that way and uh, feel it shining down is the song we're working our way to it. And uh, nothing like the uh, Haley family farm to, uh, to paint the picture to, to get us into this song. Yeah, this is a this is a little single that I produced at my home studio. I had just gotten a, an Ableton setup, which is a music programming setup to create loops. So I pretty much played everything on this particular track. It was the end of winter. I was we were at, um, homeschooling. My son was we were studying Greek mythology, and we had just read the story of Demeter and Persephone. And so we were learning about the cycles of seasons and how the Greeks related with that. And one of the parts in the song, you'll hear me say, I hear Damita ring to wake up out of winter to the comfort of spring. And it's all about that story. A lot of people think that I'm saying, I hear the meter ring, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm talking about the meter. So. Yep. And it became a, uh, a radio Margaritaville hit uh, and taking us through a few seasons now through few changes of seasons and right here on the Steve Huntington show on Sirius XM on demand with Kaz Haley. Feel it shining down. It's a special day 
Doing something over nothing doesn't get in your way. Everyone that you know has got that special glow when the soul get up and dance. It's like a cosmic smile, a really natural style. You got the power to heal, the power to feel, and the soul to get up and dance. Colors hypnotize in pursuit of this endless dream. Fascination, learning, meditation, mindful of the grace it brings. I hear that made the rain to wake up out of winter through the comfort of spring. With the rhythm of the sun calling out to the one that minds are forever sing.
story to tell that uh, we'll work him into that with Kaz Haley, our special guest on the Steve Huntington Show on Radio Margaritaville, Sirius XM On Demand. We started with Kaz and those three with Feel It Shining Down, Kaz Haley, and then Bonnie Raitt. As promised, we went back to the Urban Cowboy soundtrack for her doing a Rusty Weir song, Don't It Make You Want to Dance, and then she's a uh, guest star with John Cleary. And uh, Bonnie Raitt and Dr. John are both on the track. Let's get low down from the album Acapella, which is a tribute to Alan Toussaint. Alan was still with us when John Cleary recorded a whole album of his material. Acapella, I want to recommend that. And so here comes uh, Kaz Haley, our special guest on this week's Steve Huntington Show. Well, more than this week, this uh, four-week period that it's on. Please tell your friends. Uh, go see KazHaley.com for all of this music and videos and, 
well, maybe some of the stories, um, maybe a little part of this story, because every road I'm on is on the All the Right People album. And uh, the way I think about this is the way that that I was led into it, just watching um, uh, postseason baseball. I remember when there's a playoffs of the World Series or whatever, but I, I believe it was last year. And I see a Lincoln, Lincoln commercial, car commercial, and nice car, you know, okay. And wait, that's Kaz Haley. Wait a second. Well, am, I, am, I, am I hallucinating? I stopped and rewound it a little bit, you know, and watched again. I was not. And um, I, there's got to be a story behind that, Kaz. Oh, yeah. It was a, a grand story. It was a pretty magical moment. Um, how that whole thing went down, you know, uh, I would have never thought that I would have been on a Lincoln commercial and had this talent partnership with this big, massive luxury brand. <laughs> I was you know, surprised. We, yeah. I mean, we're, we're a little bit more roots than we are yeah. luxury out here in Paris, Texas. But, um, so how it happened, uh, we had wrote every road I'm on the summer of 2019, uh, it was just a simple song we sang going down the road about trying to find our presence on the road, trying to be able to feel like we're at home, wherever we're at. And uh, fast forward three months later, I'm October, I'm in Dallas about to hit the road, about to hit the, that about to go to the airport to fly to Minneapolis for a show. And I see this Instagram ad that had the fabulous voice of Mr. Matthew McConaughey sort of going through this whole hero's journey, kind of deep artistic spiel about finding this song and about the artist's path. And it really resonated with me. I was, I was uh, enchanted and I immediately looked at Cassie and I said, we need to enter this competition. Um, And that's a, a big deal for me to have such a, gut feeling about entering a competition because I was anti-competitions after my America's Got Talent um, experience. Although there was a lot of good things about that experience, it was really, I I don't like competing. You know what I mean? I really don't. um, I don't like standing in the shadows of other people's opinions. You know, I don't like everything that comes with those competitions. But anyways, this felt different. And I knew that I had to enter it. And the deadline was a couple of days later. I decide I'm going to enter this. I I went and booked a session to create a submission video. And I wrote a one page essay about my family, about the song, what our, you know, what our vision for our life is. And what do you know, a week later, I got the notification that we were a semifinalist. And at the time, I didn't know what that meant, other than I knew that there was some money involved. I knew that the, it said in the rules and regulations, the prizes that $17,000 was going to be. And I was, you know, all about that. Christmas was right around the corner. Um, so I was super stoked. And so another, another few days pass and I get a call from the producers of the show of, of the, the ad agency that ran the competition through Lincoln. And they start feeling us in about what this all is. And it was much, much bigger than just this songwriting competition. It was basically like a job application to getting this massive talent contract with Lincoln for multiple commercials. And it was all through this this songwriting competition that had this undercurrent of wellness, of like being okay. That's like, you know, Lincoln's new thing is sanctuary um, and how their cars can bring about that peace and stuff, you know? as funny as that is, it was just this amazing, amazing sequence of events where they start to tell us that they're going to bring a film crew to our house and film this documentary on our story. And then these little documentary pieces, there's four contestants are going to be voted on by the American public. And the last night to vote is going to be during the Grammys. And we're going to get to go to the Grammys. And the, that, that night of the Grammys, we're going to, the, the voting is going to end. And then we're going to find out who wins this talent contract to film these multiple Lincoln commercials to get a Lincoln car. It was this big talent contract, you know, very, very, very good for our family. And uh, so we go through the whole process. We go to the Grammys and the next day we find out we win. We won the competition 
And then what happens next is there's this month long road trip where they're going to film the whole thing. We're going to travel around talking to different people. Uh, one being Matthew McConaughey. We talked with Tank and the Bangas down in New Orleans, the legendary John Cleary. And basically the idea was me getting advice from all of these, all of these amazing people and sort of seeing how that affects the song. And the, the, the road trip's going to end at Capitol Records, Capitol Studios, where Al Schmidt, the legendary music producer, is going to record this. Al's in his 90s. So Al's, Al passed away since then. But oh. we got to have one of the last sessions recording this song with Al Schmidt. And then that was February. And then March hit. And all of the plans changed because of the pandemic. So the commercial that you saw was not the actual commercial that we filmed. It was just segments of it because the commercial we filmed was a commercial that was centered in a theater. And that didn't play well with the pandemic, you know, the theater, that whole world um, with, you know, with COVID. And so <clears throat> it ended up a lot of the a lot of the plans with the co commercial campaign didn't didn't go through. But it still was this amazing blessing because they did have that one commercial and we still did get the talent contract and stuff. So it was definitely it's what got us through 2020 and uh, definitely brought on a bunch of amazing scenarios so there you it, go it's quite the story and it's quite the song that had a much more simpler beginning but uh that, that's what a what a good song can do uh take on a life of its own or or yeah a lot of people ask did you write the song for that you know for the whole thing and i was like nope nope it was already written <laughs> it is on uh the album uh all the right people oh i didn't mention you can get that album uh, from mailboat records too. mailboatrecords.com is a site i've often mentioned over the years and uh all the right people's the album and the song is every road i'm on on the steve huntington show with kaz haley <laughs>
My pappy said, son, you're gonna drive me to drinking if you don't stop driving that hot rod Lincoln. Have you heard the story of the hot rod race with the Fords and Lincolns was setting the pace? That story is true, I'm here to say I was driving that Model A. It's got a Lincoln motor and it's really souped up. That Model A body makes it look like a pup. It's got eight cylinders and uses them all. It's got overdrive, just won't stall. With a four-barrel carb and a dual exhaust, with four eleven gears, you can really get lost. It's got safety tubes, but I ain't scared. The brakes are good, the tires fair. Pulled out of San Pedro late one night, the moon and the stars was shining bright. We was driving up great fine hill, passing cars like they was standing still. Suddenly, in a wink of an eye, a Cadillac sedan passed us by and said, Boys, it's a mark for me. By then, the taillight was all you could see. Now, the fellas had ripped me for being behind, so I thought I'd make the Lincoln unwind. Took my foot off the gas, and man alive, I shoved it on down into overdrive. Wound it up to 110. My speedometer said that I hit top end. My foot was blue, like lead to the floor. That's all there is, and there ain't no more. Now the boys all thought lost my sense And telephone poles looked like a picket fence They said slow down, I see spots The lines on the road just look like dots Took a corner, sideswiped the truck Crossed my fingers just for luck My fenders was clicking the guardrail post The guy beside me was white as a ghost Smoke was coming from out of the back When I started to gain on that Cadillac Knew could catch him, I thought I could pass Don't you know by then we'd be low on gas We had flames coming from out of the side you Feel the tension, man, what a ride I said, look out boys, I got a license to fly And that caddy pulled over and let us by Now all of a sudden she started knocking him down And the gym she started to rock And I looked in the mirror, red light was blinking The cops was after my hot rod Lincoln They arrested me and they put me in jail and they called my pappy to throw my bail and he said, son, you're gonna drive me to drinking if you don't stop driving that hot rod, Lincoln.
having fun now on the Steve Huntington Show with Kaz Haley. And uh, there we have John Batiste doing Freedom. And we also heard, uh, well, the late, great Commander Cody, George Frayne. Yeah. Uh, Commander Cody is a lost planet airman. We, and we just lost Commander, uh, not but a month, month and a half ago now. And had to get the, the, a favorite song with Lincoln in there. The Lincoln the car, not Lincoln the president. And every road I'm on was first to that with uh, with Kaz's amazing story of uh, being after quite a few years, being inspired enough by, uh, by hearing about a contest to uh, to get you into the that Lincoln thing. What a story. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty magical, man. Yeah. You, know? um, you can catch up with some of this. Oh, I went meant to ask you. Um, did the documentary ever fully happen at the farm? So and, and- the, it, it did happen and it was up and live for the last year. It just recently got taken down. Oh. Um, and I'm not sure if it'll get put back up or not due to some uh, legal schmeagle, you know, that of course garbage. Yeah. Wow, man, I w- we should have done this show a year ago and we could have uh, had everybody uh, punch it up and, and look I think at there, it. I think there might be some stuff where you can see part of the documentary with me and Matthew McConaughey on YouTube cool. yeah. and stuff. Well, on YouTube, I, uh, I saw the, uh, the early days of contest for you. I saw America's Got Talent and, um, and what you had to say a little bit. I, I was very shy about uh, reality TV. In fact, I still... Uh, rebel against it like the plague yeah. um but in, in the house me too <laughs> yeah I, you know i've got uh, a family member and certainly friends who just love that sort of thing and uh you've got an that experience. was my wife my wife too Cass, and some friends and um wow what an early uh, bout with um well i'll let you tell but but with contests yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah you know it's 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 a uh, the thing about reality tv shows it's really strange is you take an artist, whatever kind of artist they are, and usually artists are vulnerable in the first place. You know, you want to do anything to be able to, to be able to pursue a career and your passion, this art. And our society really doesn't hold up the arts as a viable career path, at least on a local level where I live. And so, you know, you've got all these vulnerable people that are catapulted from very few opinions about who they are and what they're doing. Usually negative ones, you know, about you need to get a real job. At least that's what my situation was. You know, my in-laws were telling me to get a real job. You know, they wanted to make sure I was going to be able to take care of Cassie. And I understand why they, why they felt that way. But, and then you're catapulted into this scenario that seems like you just are there. And that's the way they produce their shows that, your everything is, you know, blowing up now and you've made it. This is the moment, you know, and then most people, you know, all of but one loses and then it just sort of goes away. And it's like, I call it flash fame. It's, yeah. it's flash reality fame. Good and term. there's so many, so many amazing talents that go on those shows and just the experience, the polarity experience of, of being in front of everybody and having the show produced like this is the moment where you get to pursue your career for the rest of your life. Then the reality of when you're not on TV, you're not on TV. And reality TV show fans, for the most part, are fans of the show, no matter who you are. And some might keep up with you, but it's a different type of fan. And so I sort of instinctually knew, knew this the whole time going through this, but I still, it was still really difficult for me coming off of the TV show and having to experience the reality behind these reality shows, the business model that's behind them with um, the development of these artists and how they funnel them through these record company, these sort of standard, standard deals that, you know, standard doesn't mean good. and. Um, and what it all means, it's like, it's like you entering a burger competition and you've got a really great recipe and you don't realize that winning the recipe means winning the competition means that you're selling the recipe and you no longer own it. Right. You know, you, and that, and, and that's, that story's not told. Right. Um, and so it's a really, a really weird experience. 
um, going through that and learning how that all works. And, you know, when, when people, I had a great experience doing America's Got Talent, I was always suspect and I was always a little bit cynical about the way it was all working. This is back in, uh, back in 2007, 2007. Yeah. Long time ago. And, you know, I, I did have, I am thankful that I went on the show, but I'm really thankful that I had the kind of mindset that I had going into it, knowing that what I was going to do, regardless if I wanted or not, is I was going to go back to doing what I was doing, which was pursuing my career and continuing on um, and really being self-directed. You know, I'm the kind of guy that got into this um, partly because I like being my own boss. You know, I don't want anybody telling me what my art's going to be, how to do it, you know, and, and when, and, and I don't want anybody more invested in this than I am myself. And those reality shows make it difficult for a person like me. Um, you know, the way that those companies protect their investment is they bring all the songwriters in, they package it up the way that they think that it needs to be. And um, I just wasn't for that. So after the TV show, even though the company exercised all their legal options, I decided to abandon that. I hired a lawyer and I went back to doing what I doing what I do. And I, actually that's when I bought the property and started the homesteading thing, came back, tried to get grounded again and get back to reality, um, real reality, you know? Did you and, live in uh, fear that they were going to come after you and track you down? Well, and they, they, I mean, they did, they did come after me. They did track me down. <laughs> Um, yeah, they really did. They started showing up at shows and stuff. And, and I was like, look, I had changed my number. I was, uh, I was like, talk to my lawyer. Um, and it's, 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 you know, I was immature at the same time. There probably was a better way that I could have dealt with it, but that's the only way I knew how was just to cut the communication and hire a lawyer. So, you know, I'm really thankful that I made the decisions that I made, um, coming out of the TV show and decided that I wanted to be the one in control of my art and the way I'm pursuing it. I'm okay with a slow burn. I'm okay with a nice slow trajectory. Even though I had the experience of what fame is, I, you know, the biggest, the greatest thing about going on that show is I was able to, to learn the difference between success and fame, success that you've earned and that you embody and that you feel and fame. There's something that sort of fleeting that just sort of happens. And it's just the shadow of other people's opinions. Yeah. Fame. You know, and some people, if you want fame, you want to experience that reality TV show can be good. It can be good for artists as well, but I think you just got to be really cautious. Like when, when people ask me about their children going on those shows, I say, absolutely. I wouldn't put my children on one of those shows ever. You know, an artist is a human being that needs to have, you know, room to grow and to develop you know, and the, one of the most, one of the toughest things about those reality shows is it's a heavy brand. It's like a fixed identity. So you have this massive heavy brand and this fixed identity of pe who people think you are. And that can really suck an artist dry, you know, when you're not able to just expand and, and, and grow as an artist, you know, yeah. so. Well, we're uh, really glad that you were, uh, your art and your career has unfolded the way it is too, as opposed to being uh, the winner of the reality show and, uh, and then forgotten uh, within a very fast period after that. Um, let's go back to the, to the uh, days and hear a song by uh, the police that I think you remember. <laughs> yeah. And the reason, the only reason I played this song is I went into those auditions and I played a couple originals and they weren't interested at all. And they exactly. said, do you know any, do you know any modern covers? I said, no, I don't. They said, well, play something a British guy would like. And so I was like, well, I know a song written by a British guy. <laughs> and so right. I played, I played walking on the moon and yeah. I love the police, you know? So there it is on the Steve Huntington show with Kaz Haley walking on the moon, the police. Thank you. 
be for Paul. What is for Gens cannot be for John. What is for Harry cannot be for John. What is for Rufus cannot be for Marcos. Want you to know. What is for I cannot be for another man. So I'll follow the rain. Follow the rainbow. Ooh, follow the rainbow. And follow the rain. Follow the rain. Follow the rain. Follow the follow the rainbow. Ooh, follow the rainbow. With Kaz Haley on the Steve Huntington Show. And one of the things I've loved about Kaz's music um, over the years on Radio Margaritaville and here on the Sirius XM On Demand uh, app and uh, this particular show is that you have always been a proponent of reggae music. I mean, em embracing it and working it into your own music. So we got a little right there. Well, we started with uh, police doing walking on the moon and there's another longtime proponent of reggae music and then we got some toots in the maytal speaking of police music that's from a reggae tribute to the police spirits in the material world album and uh and then we got to clinton Fearon because i asked you kaz to come up with and recommend one yeah man i have you know my first exposure to reggae was my mom cleaning the house to bob marley and, you know, for years I got into Bob Marley and all of the, all of the roots stuff, Peter Tosh, Toots, all that stuff. But in the last, in the last five or six years, I was introduced to Clinton Fearon, who is the lead singer of the Gladiators. I got to meet Clinton and I got to experience his music in person and experience the man. And I, um, he's my all time favorite reggae artist. Now I think he's truly the heart of reggae. All of his music is so high vibration and conscious, and he's just got a heart of gold. And he's still touring, still doing his thing all over the world. Him and his wife travel all around, and it's just, it's a truly inspiring artist. So Clinton Fearon, all the way. Wow. Is he Jamaican based still? Or? Yes, he is. No, no, he, he's, from, he's from Jamaica, but he lives in Washington. He lives in Seattle, Washington now. Wow. I'm going to see when the next time we're in the same part of the world and try to catch. Oh, him. you're going to, you're going to fall in love. Yeah. Clinton Fearon, a tip from uh, Kaz Haley on Steve Huntington's show. So we're, we're now in the present tense and the album, uh, all the right people. I, I say, uh, get it, uh, go to uh, kazhaley.com when you also could go to mailboat records for that particular album. And, uh, the newest uh, cool song, and we know simply by watching the video <laughs> how cool it is. It's uh, called "Pour It Out." Nice one. Thanks, man. Yeah, this one's uh This is another song Cassie and I co-wrote. You know, Cassie and I co-wrote the last two albums together, and this song is about what singing and writing songs does for us. I, I know uh, it's like, and at what our core belief is is that. On a human level, we need to be able to express ourselves, whether that's through yelling or singing in the shower. Um, but through song, there's a special there's a special release that happens. And songs and singing has been like our emotional compass with our family of how we're feeling. And pour it out is a little bit of a you know fiction story, or really not. It's sort of archetype about the trauma that we all hold on to through our bad, whether, whether it be actions that we are guilty about, whether it be, a, 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 whether it be substances that we're abusing, whatever the trauma it is that we're holding on to, 
you know, the way that we've been able to overcome a lot of that stuff is through song. And I think that that's a really core human element that Native Americans knew about and that indigenous tribes all over the world have known about through the, through the ages is the ability to create this bridge and how healthy it is to just pour it out, to just let it out, to feel it. And those of us who wouldn't think of going a day, wouldn't think of going an hour without music in our lives. Um, that, that describes that as well. I mean, you just have to have it every, all the time, have to have yep. music. And, and whether you're pouring it out and you're in the shower, you're singing it yourself or getting it from somebody that's inspired you. Um, the video, Kaz, uh, the animated, I mean, I'm going to say almost timeless uh, kind of animation. I got to recommend you. it. I got to recommend it. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. You know, we, I found uh, the, the artist, her name is Val uh, Lemony Green is what she goes by. She is living, she lives in Spain. She's from Brazil. And I found her online just through a random connection and reached out and asked her if she would do it. It took her about a year to make animation is slow. It's one of those things that takes a long time. She just did a, a fantastic job. Yeah, got to recommend that. Go to uh, Kaz's uh, webpage to see this and enjoy listening to it with us now. And thank you, Kaz Haley, for being on the show. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate you. Here it is. Pour it out. There in the front of many low pack of feet I've done it to myself and now I can barely steer Lost in between pain and love Can see what's on the ground and God I can't feel you above Sound. 